Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode of The Detour Live. Nice and fresh here in Melbourne, 6.30am start. Uh, and it's about, what, 10.30pm over in Italy, Johnny, and uh, you've missed dinner, mate. You're coming in this... I have. Well, oh. exactly. The bus, they had a two-hour drive after the stage, so it got in very late, um, and we're just out of Naples, so the traffic is ridiculous uh and yes our dinner was just starting just after 10 and uh i did a little chat with gene and so i got a quick roll of the entree and i'm I'm just hopefully if we keep it to half an hour i can go back and get some more red wine and food well we're gonna have to because it looks like your wi-fi is probably going to conk out as well don't adjust (laughs) your sets folks Uh, that's just if you scratch your wi-fi at this stage he has gone off his phone uh we're also joined by uh, team Bike Exchange, J.K. Ryder, who's pinch hitting again, Sam Bewley. Uh Bills, I'll ask you, did you see much of the, the Giro stage today? Fingers crossed you did. Great day for I the breakaway. I did. I, yeah. I saw the last 70K. Perfect. And actually, I, I said to Hannah, my girlfriend, when I was watching the stage, I said, last night on the detour, when Jonesy asked me who my favourites was, the first thing that came to mind was, I was going to say, oh, it'd be interesting to see if the Jumbo guys go. Like I and up the road, and I was gonna say Dumoulin, and I was mm. like, ah, oh, nah, sounds a bit stupid. Should have said it. Yeah, it was a good ride by Big Tommy. What was yeah, your take, yeah, Iffy? Yeah, Last back. day in the hole. <laughs> it was well. Yeah, we saw quite a bit of it. We uh, took off and got halfway uh, to our hotel, and then got a message that we had to go and swap cars with Torio because he needed to get back in the race and. His vet car didn't have stickers, so we did all of that, watched all of the, but I saw quite a bit of the race, which was good. And uh, four and a half thousand metres of climbing, I mean, that's a mountain day. Uh, it's mm. just there was no mountain right near the end, so GC guys didn't really fire it up, but it was a tough day in the office. All right, well, here's uh, Simon Yates and Matt White uh, after the finish, courtesy of uh, Green Edge Cycling Twitter page. <laughs> One of those days, just a bit of a slog, I think is the word I would describe that day as. Um, no real GC, ac- GC action, so um, yeah, we'll look to the next day, but uh, I'm sure we'll get some tired legs out there tomorrow. Yeah, as expected, uh, a very, very aggressive start. Probably we expected maybe a little bit more aggressive from the opening kilometers, but through the mountains, it uh, the race really did explode until we got a break that finally formed, and then and after that, I was maybe expecting a little bit more control from some other teams, uh, but anyway, the break was too strong, and uh, so to hang on to one to win the stage. We have a circuit race in Napoli tomorrow. Uh, it is not easy, not necessarily for the sprinters. I don't think it will be. I think it's a uh, it's a perfect day for the breakaway tomorrow. Perfect day for the breakaway tomorrow, uh, says Matt White. We're going to preview uh, stage number eight in the second half of the show. Um, and you also caught up with Gene Bates, Infy. Uh, you're back doing interviews, which is great. We've got content coming <laughs> up the stick. Uh, this is your interview with Gene Bates uh, tonight, just before dinner. Okay, well, it could be a bit rusty. It's the first day uh, back in action after two days in isolation. But uh, we've got the OK, Vazzy behind the camera and myself. So uh, uh, pretty excited. But it was a pretty hard day today. We had uh, a stage with 4,500 metres of climbing. So that's hard in anyone's language. And uh, with me, I've got Gene Bates, uh, Sports Director with uh, Bike Exchange Jaco. Tough day in the office, mate. It was a very hard day. Um, and we knew it was going to be hard. Uh, we earmarked this stage uh, when, when the race was presented earlier in the year. Um, we came down, did some did some work, looked at the course in detail, and we knew it was going to be a very difficult day for for everyone. Um, it's one of those stages, as you said, nearly five thousand metres of climbing involved. Without a uh, mountaintop finish, is is particularly dangerous because you're not sure exactly how it's going to unfold. There's always a an array of strategies and tactics going on in the bunch, particularly early in the race when the GC hasn't sorted itself out. So it had the potential to really. Uh, Go to the shit, for lack of a better word. <laughs> so, interesting. I, I noticed uh, in the bits that I did see uh, that um, you guys took a bit of responsibility at times and put the guys on the front. So, what was that all about? 
Yeah, look, we knew a break was going to go. Um, yeah, we, yesterday we saw the complete opposite, probably the easiest stage most people have ever seen in the Giro d'Italia. Um, so we knew there was a lot of fresh guys coming in and, and that first hour was going to be critical. So we had to have a presence. We didn't want to miss out on a big move. Um, and we had certain teams that we earmarked it. You know, we really didn't want to be in the move without them. So uh, um, the team looked really strong. Uh, how's the, how are the boys all after that race? Yeah, good. Um, yeah, I'd be lying if they, I said it was easy, but um, they did. They looked like a great unit together. Um, we had good numbers there in the final, and that was the main thing is to get Simon across the line safely and not lose any time with some big mountain days coming up. Of course, Simon's the big one, of course. Uh, you know, we, we believe, I believe he'll win this uh, Giro. Uh, but uh, how is he going with his knee? He seems to have been getting better every day. Yeah, he is getting good. Um, he, he's getting better. Um, as I said, it's always going to be a really hard day today, uh, regardless of, of form or how things are running. And everyone's got their little issues. It's a grand tour, after all. Um, so nobody's perfect. But he, he's going well, um, and we're confident he's on the up and up. Gene, thank you very much, mate, and uh, look forward to a little bit easier day, although a solid day tomorrow. Yeah, look, uh, it could be anything again. Uh, it's a circuit race around Napoli, and the, for anyone that's been to Napoli, they know it's an absolute mess of a city, let alone trying to put a bike race in it. Great for a pizza, though. So anyway, talk to you tomorrow. That's uh, DS Gene Bates um, after the finish there. Now, Bills, when you hear as a rider a uh, circuit race in Napoli, What's the first thing that's popping into your head? Fuck. A lot of kids are in bed at the moment, so we, we appreciate it. You can't ask the question if you don't like the answer. <laughs> but, um, but it just... It, it, it no. chills this is not the point. social distance uh, podcast, you know, you know. This is the real stuff here. <laughs> but the, the reason I paused was I was trying to think of an alternative word and I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but why, why is that? Why, why is there instant panic? Uh, exactly like Gino said, the south of Italy, um, notoriously bad roads, slippery roads, bumpy roads, potholes. Um, and then Napoli is, yeah, it's, a, it's quite a hectic city. Um, we obviously, <laughs> obviously going to be closed roads and everything, but just it's just a city that has lots of traffic, lots of people, um, the roads aren't looked after that well, and just like any European city, really, if you if you go and race in the heart of a big big European city, it's twisty, it's turny, it's up and down, it's cobbles. There's um, you know tra- lots of traffic furniture, traffic islands, all these sorts of things. So it just makes for a really technical, really nervous race. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, all the GC guys are going to want to be at, in the front of the bunch all day to stay safe, and then you've got the stage contenders wanting to do the same thing as well. The sprinters who may be thinking. It can be a sprint, uh, you know, breakaways, breakaway guys. It's just going to be, it's going to be a, potentially the one of the most dangerous stages of the race. So I'm sure a lot of nerves in, um, in all the teams for tomorrow, but let's hope everyone gets through safely. Um, if you, I remember <laughs> covering the Giro in 2009 and there was a lot of issues around, you know, safety, traffic management. There was the protest stage because riders had had enough because doing the circuit races, I think in Milan, there was parked cars on the side of the road. I remember Jens Voigt yeah. coming off the bike one day and just went on this rant saying that one day we're literally going to get in the bus, go to the finish line and say, see, see what happens because there wasn't lights in the tunnels and all these sort of little things. Um, is it, it, it's obviously improved a lot because the last couple of years yeah. it has been a real focus on rider safety. Um, you can't obviously plan for when riders lead a bunch through traffic furniture like what happened in Turkey. They, those things just happen. That's rider fault. But uh, <laughs> that's a jab there for Bills. We've covered that. Uh, but it has improved, though, Johnny, you would say. But there's still always time has. at the Giro. I, I, there's going to be one day. I've raced, a, I've raced around a Naples area back in the late 70s and one of the worst organised bike races of all time. But uh, that, Why? The, the, what the Giro and... Oh, there were cars coming off from everywhere, and oh, it was just you know the roads weren't closed properly, cars parked everywhere. But that's happened in recent times in, in Milan. They, they finished some circuits in Milan, and it's just chaotic, uh, ridiculous. But that aside, 
Um, they were most worried that it would be if it was wet tomorrow because it just, there's a lot of newly laid roads, but um, if it got, it got wet, it would have been just like an ice rink. But it's no rain predicted, so hopefully we'll get out of it. But it's, it's an interesting stage. There's lots of little lumps. Uh, and everyone's saying it's not, probably not going to be a sprinter stage. The sprinters have only got two or three days, uh, stages to go. Uh, you know, for the ones, most will leave after stage 11 because that'll be the end of it. It's two days to go. I reckon Caleb would be looking at this saying, this is an opportunity for me. So teams like Lotto, uh, I, I suppose for uh, for quick step, it's a bit hard because uh, he's lost his main lead out uh, man now, Morkov. Um and I'm not sure what it was. It could be COVID-related, I believe, but uh, there's a few of them popping up. So I think we could have a bit of an issue with that over the next few days. But uh, no, I think it's a, it's an interesting stage. Lots of little lumps, and those little lumps are quite short and steep. But Caleb gets over those. So um, I think I, I, I reckon it's a Caleb day. I reckon. Uh, what do you reckon, of Magnus Court, Bills? Good stage for Maggie. Run for him. Yeah, mm, yeah, it's perfect. good social, Maggie. Perfect. I mean, you can't go past. I don't want to be like a broken record, but Vanderpol. <laughs> to yeah, per, perfect stage, yeah. Vanderpol. Um, and then yeah. you know all yeah. the like. Obviously, we look at the profile there, but if you look at a, if you look at a map of the stage, it'll probably give you a better idea how hard they can make that that um that stage because it, it all depends on with those cl- up up of you know whether it's a 1K climb or a 500-metre climb straight down and up another one, it all depends on what the road's like. If it's a twisty road with hairpins on every descent and you're coming off that descent in a single line at warp speed and going straight for another climb and then doing the same again, then it makes it really, really difficult for the sprinters to get over because once they get pinned on a climb, even though they get over, they can get over the climb with the bunch, if they're too far back, the bunch lines out on those twisty descents, you hit the next climb at 60K an hour. By the time the... Front guys have got to the top of the climb there and he's just hitting the bottom of it and then eventually it just breaks. That's what makes these stages difficult. It's not necessarily the climbs itself. It's the roads. It's just with the twisty or the descents tricky, uh, the run into all those climbs and the, the constant one after each other. That's what makes these stages tricky. And I imagine in the city of Napoli, that's exactly how it's going to be. Mm. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to... So it's one, it's one, one, big, one big loop. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. I'll just say it's one, no, you're you're right. come out one big loop and then four small no, no, and four small loops. So he was just saying he wasn't sure of the parkour. I'm just saying what it was: one big loop and four small loops. Yeah, I might sound underprepared, but blame it on your director. Yeah. No. Everyone's under prepared on this show, so yeah. it's not an issue, yeah. mate. And you're doing a great job. We're not knocking anything you do, mate, or you won't come back. <laughs> no. There's a lot of love in the can't room. Get, you let's, can't keep me away. Uh, let's, let's take a quick break. We'll be back with plenty more, and we're going to fire up the detour, DeLorean, because Billy's going to have some very funny insights to uh, the 2016 Giro. Stay tuned for that. Look at this bike. You think it's just a bike, right? But it's not. It's a bike. 374 people are looking at. This guy, this girl, them, all looking at it. People from here, there, and wherever this is. People that are looking for a bike. Or just a piece of it. Amateurs. Semi-amateurs. And pro-amateurs. This guy wants this bike, but with this crank and these bars. This could be the perfect match. But not this one. This girl has a bike to sell, and thousands of people might purchase it. Eyes on Bikes help grow small businesses. His, hers, yours, and the latest data and insights help those businesses keep moving. We are the world's number one bike marketplace, with over 500,000 products and 900 brands, where buyers and sellers are brought together in a place where a bike is never just a bike. Bike Exchange, where the world buys, sells, learns, and rides.
every moment. The all-new Lexus NX. Fun fact. You can make cycling part of your next Let's Go adventure. With a bike, you can enjoy and explore even more places. So feel the wind in your hair, book a bike, enjoy the outdoors, and see more with a Let's Go motorhome today. Johnny, some great sponsors there, mate. Let you do the spill. You've ripped me all the time. There are certainly some great... Well, you you do it very well when you bother to do it. It's when you forget (laughs) is the problem. But uh, (laughs) no, no, we do have some wonderful sponsors. Look, first of all, we probably don't give quite enough... Well, we'll go to Lexus of Blackburn. Yes, they're sensational. Been sponsor of the Bay Crits for the last three years. So uh, um, Andrew and Sarah Moore, wonderful people. So if you're interested in a luxury car... Well, then oh, go to the people no, who support us. And they're not just luxury cars, actually. Lexus has started off at a, at a reasonable price. And that lead car, I've driven that. Oh, amazing stuff. And they've also been sponsored of the uh, Women's Herald Sun Tour, Melbourne Warnable. So they're, they're great supporters of cycling. So make sure you look after them. But, of course, Bike Exchange, they're the naming rights uh, right. partner to the team I'm following around here at the moment and to the people who give you a paycheck every 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 week or second week i don't know when it comes bills but they're a great company uh australian company around the world and uh, if you want a bike jump onto uh bike exchange uh and of course let's go motorhomes well where else would you go that do that's right perfect john <laughs> good job 100 support right. from here mate don't forget where your paycheck comes from sam <laughs> That was the message. <laughs> All right. Um, we're going to fire up his favourite segment, Detour. Dude. Roads. Well, we're going. We don't need roads. Now, I couldn't help but notice with the uh, little video that Sammy's doing on the ground for Green Edge uh, that it looks like they still can't use the um, race vision. That was one of the biggest issues. I remember rolling up to the Giro in 2016, and we used to just pinch, you know, highlights or whatever. And we were told the night before, you're not allowed to film in the buses, you're not allowed to use any race vision, you're not allowed to do anything at the hotels. All these restrictions where I said to Shane Barron, mate, <laughs> I can't do my job. I can't do my job. What do you want me to – I might as well hand my press pass in. I'm done. He goes, oh, you'll, you'll come up with something, Dan. So I sat there angry in the bus for a few days. I was talking to the riders. I was just venting. Remember, we were doing video yeah. content where it was we were in Holland, weren't day. we? Yeah, and it was just like, oh, we, we, we're playing um, John Lennon songs. Give peace a chance, like high fives, <laughs> just begging for us to use. Right in the end, we cracked it. I remember saying to you, Bills, I got an idea. I'm going to recreate the stages with toys. And that's when we did this Planet OGE series. And this was really the birth of Bully's uh, start in the media. Uh, so here's the first video we did for Planet OGE. Welcome to another stage of Giro d'Italia. Awesome crowds today. Here we are at the sign-on and it's Nibali, the shark. He looks hungry today. His teammates actually look a bit nervous. And here's Team Sky, fresh off the Death Star. And here is one of the favourites of today's stage, Gripple the Gorilla. And it's great to see Marcel Kittel embracing the Valon protocol with the onboard footage today. Righto, I've got Esteban Chavez here. How are you feeling about today's stage, mate? Si, sí, mi amo Esteban. Tengo hambre. Team's looking very strong today. Whoa! What was that? I'm out of here! And here's the neutral start. In fact, I've started 10 minutes early. There's no sign of the gorilla or the shark. Oh, here he comes, the gorilla, dragging his feet behind. So, we have a seven-man break of the day. And looks like a mecap is just sitting there and waiting for the others. And the halfway point in the race, the Tesco Tuna Chunks Tower. Have you had your chunks today? So apparently the mecap didn't adopt to aero position, so was flicked with 20k to go. Whoa, huge crash, huge crash. We see the bike footage there. And slow motion shows it was a stray horse. How many times do we have to tell you guys, you bring a horse to a race, put it on a leash. It's like bringing a shark to a swimming pool, guys. Think about it. And here's the Australian champ making his way back to the peloton. Poor Mikat. He gone from the brake straight to the broom wagon. And a heavy-footed sag wagon driver, Mikat's gone straight to the asphalt around Sparagus Corner. Hell of a day. 
They are lining out for the sprint. And Greibel hits out early. And here comes Caleb Ewan. Oh, he's hit the finish line and the shark has been wiped out. And the replay shows Greipel's winner by a short half. And Greipel celebrating with his teammates. Great to see the meerkat there in support. I hope you enjoyed the commentary. we see you in the mountains. Oh, classic stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I just remember when we were trying to come up with ideas, we're going Tuna Chunks Tower. That's a bit the lost way when you're going, have you had your chunks today? But uh, that, that kicked up a real stink with the Giro. I remember um, Cycling Weekly did a whole article saying, you know, Green Edge had the last laugh with the rights issues. And then I think the next day, the, the Giro thought, oh, you want to play that game? They kicked three of our videos off YouTube. And they're all videos <laughs> where we won. So the team time trial in Belfast, gone. Um, Bling, wing in peak, gone. And we don't, when he stayed with, all the rights were blocked. So it's like, yeah, you just sort of stay on side with those guys. <laughs> but yeah, your mate. Was funny. It, was, I, it, it seems so simple, that Planet OGE, but I feel like it took us half the rest day to create that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it did. It did. I remember even Whitey was in there like pulling like props for us. And I remember one of the other teams walked past and we had this whole floor just set up with toys and all like the team around filming toy stuff. And people were going, what are you doing? This is like a grand tour. <laughs> that, actually, I still remember that, that rest day because I, to this day, of all the grand tours I've done, that hotel was the worst hotel I've ever stayed at in oh. that grand tour. It you remember was like it? A, yeah, it was like the, a... Um, Delta Florence, it was called. We mm. drove past it after Strata Bianchi this year and it sent a shiver down my spine. Mm. That was a horrible rest day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> back to the race, Ify. Uh, how are you feeling with the overall group at Bike Exchange? Billy said earlier that, you know, you would be nervous going into this stage and, and when you're riding for GC, I mean, every day you've got to be on. Um, what's the feeling you get from sort of the riders and staff going into this next sort of block? Look, as I was racing uh, out of the restaurant to, to get here to in be in time for the detour, uh, I just stopped at the table just for a second, gave fellas, and they were just all laughing. Oh, good to see you back because I've you know, been gone for two days. But they were just – you could just tell they were in great spirits. There was – they they switched on. They, they believe in themselves, so which is which is great. That's obviously been something that the team tried to start at the beginning, Bills, to create that culture where, you know, you can be serious, but you can also be relaxed. Um, mm -hmm. Is that one of the things that you still notice when you are at things like the dinner table? Because obviously for the viewers, you, you're often sharing hotels with other teams. Do you still notice that as sort of a key difference with the, the Green Edge sort of setup? Oh, definitely, yeah. And you still get it. We had it actually in um, Tour Romandy last week. We were... We were dining in a, ho in, a, in a hotel restaurant. The hotel was quite full, but we had our own room. But it was still like relatively well connected to this restaurant in terms of that they could still hear us, basically, or see us through a glass window. And I don't know what we were talking about. Who knows? But we just lost it like we do most nights. Just, you know, like it's sort of that time we've created that culture where, you know, we're really serious about the races. We have a, our, um, our pre-race meetings on the bus. You know, they're taken very seriously. Things are discussed, ideas are thrown around. We go out, we race the best we can. Um, you know, whether the race goes the way we wanted it to or the way it didn't, or goes the opposite way to that. Uh, we have open, honest just, um, debriefs on the bus, and you know, everything's, <clears throat> you know, um, what am I trying to say? It's like, you know, the, the hard things can be Not said sure. comfortably if you need, if you need, if you need to do that. Um, and then you walk off the bus, and it's done. The day's finished. You know, and mm. the, or the the professional part of it, and we go then to the to the dinner, and by then you nobody wants to talk about the racing anymore, whether it was successful or not. We just want to talk, and mate, we half the time we did, couldn't even repeat what we talk about, probably just garbage, but we do. We just have fun. We just laugh, and oh, yeah, like in Romandy, the half the restaurants trying to eat their sushi and they're just looking at this these bike riders speaking English in this <laughs> other room, like what is going on in there. But it's a really important part of the culture. It's a really important part of the culture because everyone goes to bed feeling good then. You know, mm. whether if it's been a crappy day, everyone gets back to the room and goes, ah, oh, you know, that was, you, you start to feel like a bit of life again and you, and you wake up ready to go the next day. 
Well, that's one thing we spoke with Brent uh, yesterday because, you know, it's the right of transfer market starting to heat up. There's a lot of articles being written about it. But how important is it when you do bring in new riders into the group that you don't just look at the results, you look at the personality and will they fit into the culture? Hmm. And it's it's, it's it's very important, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a good point. It's a difficult one to, to manage, like, because you don't go through, like, an interview process like you would do in some businesses, for example. You know, like, you sign a rider and, I mean, I guess it, it, in the end, somebody in the management or somebody in the riders group knows that that bike rider, has come across them either in other teams or, um, you know, just on the road in races or... So there's, there's always somebody, I suppose, who can give a character reference to the guy. But, mm. like, you know, you, you still don't sit down in a room necessarily with the guy and interview him and learn his character and, yeah. you know, make him do a personality assessment or, I don't know, whatever. So, like, you, you still take a little bit of a gamble. Um, but we've done very well over the course of the 10 years that Greenwich has been around. And that's because, uh, you know, people do have – our management's got their ear to the ground. They're not afraid to ask the riders – and the team like, hey, we want to. We're interested in this guy. What's he like in the bunch? Oh, mate, he's a great guy. Or, oh no, no, this guy's, you know, whatever. Um, because it's <laughs> it's really really important. And like, I swore again. It's it's more <laughs> it's more difficult for that rider to come and in, come into the team. And if they don't fit the culture, it's not necessarily about fitting like fitting the mold mm. straight away. But it's about being open to to learning how how our team operates and and. And being and buying into what the team is about, mm. and as, and as long as they do that, like we we've had you know 160 probably 60 bike riders, different bike riders on this team over the years, and everybody's different. Everyone's different personalities. Everyone's a different character. But as long as that person buys into the team, and buys into the culture, and buys into what we're trying to achieve, you can be whoever you want to be, and you, with your personality, that doesn't matter because everybody knows ah, but he's all in for the team. So as long as you do that, you're fine. If you don't do that, then it's actually more difficult for that person for the term of their contract than what it is for the people around them. Yeah. And also, let's be honest, if you get a stiff drink of water in the team that just doesn't like the culture and is sort of negative, um, that can spread, you know, mm. that can spread pretty quick. So you're trying to protect like the group so that, that you don't have that yeah. sort of one or two people. But anyway, uh, now before we wrap things up, obviously I've been asking for photos about the cuisine because you're in – uh, Italy, Ify, and uh, Vazzy's there. He's having a Peroni. Looks like a risotto, mushroom risotto. And then Ify, yep. what'd you go for? That, that was lunch. That was lunch, yeah. Why'd that you was put the mask on like that just for the photo to look like you? Just be a smart ass. Just be a smart ass for you, Dan. <laughs> okay. Well, it worked. Now, Naples, <laughs> mate, home of the best pizzas right. on the planet. Uh, can you yep. can you give us a short little video tomorrow uh, to review some of the the pizzas, the local cuisine, because surely you're just going to stick to what that. they're known for. We will do that. Yes, they are uh, renowned for their pizzas, uh, and it, I will deliver. Okay, tips for, or uh, maybe stage... I'll get, the, I'll get, the, I'll get them, I'll get them delivered. But whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Who's your tips <laughs> for the stage, lads? Start with you, Bills. Vanderpool. Yep. Ify. Caleb. All right, I'll go Magnus Court. We'll see nice. how we go. All right, well, now you go off and enjoy your dinner, Ify. You've only had a bread roll and you were whinging about it for about five minutes before we start the show. Uh, as we always say, youtube.com forward slash a detour podcast. If you're on Apple, iTunes, leave a rating and review. Uh, get behind the show. We really appreciate the support and support uh, the companies that support cycling. Lexus at blackburn.com.au. Let's go motorhomes com.au and bike exchange for all things bike related before we go john i just want to thank bills again for coming in at the last minute as he does he's just a, a, a just a, a warrior champion. a cu couple of, uh, he is a warrior a couple of big days coming up tomorrow will be interesting but uh sunday will be a ripper it'll be the stage nine the, yeah, stage nine, yeah. blockhouse. There it is, uh, and and that's the one that uh, will really shape this bike race. There's been some yeah. great stuff so far, but this one is something special. All right, mm. well, there's going to be plenty more to look forward to over the next couple of days. Thanks again, Bills. Thanks if you tune in again tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be at six thirty a.m. again, Australian Eastern Standard Time, uh, till Monday. So we'll see you again. Thanks for the support. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. This is the